November 12th would mark the day that Jeremiah Brown, my great-great-grandfather, was born in New York City, New York. At the age of seven, not much was known for the man who would later make an impact on the state of South Dakota due to a smallpox epidemic that would kill the family of all but Jeremiah and his younger brother. The two were taken to Fort Wayne, Indiana with foster parents that same year. But it is hard to say if he was adopted as a child and given a new last name or if Brown was the name that he was born with. At the age of 21, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and served five years as a scout and skilled rifleman. He advanced to the rank of corporal, and his regiment was one of those sent into the Indian country of the then Far West, which included the Dakota Territory. He traversed the region from the mouth of the Missouri River to Fort Benton, Montana. He walked the entire voyage never settling for riding a horse. He became well acquainted at all the old forts along the way and mastered the Sioux language, serving often as an interpreter. He was held in high regard by the Indians and was known throughout the Indian Territory by the name of Long Soldier. He was known as a skilled hunter and crack shot, and after he discharged, he remained in the area carrying mail between Fort Yates and Pier on foot. The trail was over 100 miles long, a three-day trail. He walked this trail on foot every time. The Indians were still hostile at this time, and at night he would camouflage himself by wrapping in a blanket under the leaves and brush to avoid detection. In the late 1880s, he was employed in and around Old Lebeau. In 1896, he was issued a patent for land and another in 1904, located two miles northwest of the present site of Glenham. He married Ellen Viola Watson of Boscobel, Wisconsin in 1890, and they lived on their farm, enduring droughts, blizzards, prairie fires, good times and bad, along with their 12 children. Their children went by the names of Perny, Pearl, their twins Dorothy, who is my great-grandmother, and Doris, Myron, George, Lloyd, Albert, Nathan, and three daughters who died in infancy. Brown was a member of the Odd Fellows and Muscovite Lodges. Politically, he was a staunch Democrat and represented his district for more than two terms on the board of county commissioners. He was a member of this board when the county courthouse was built. Many of the Indians he knew as a scout remained his friends until his death. Sometimes during the summer, they came up to his farm, set up their tents, and dug up wild turnips. They were always supplied with fresh bread and produce. Brown died at Selby Hospital on September 18, 1929, for which he is buried in Mobridge, South Dakota. In 1978, Brown was inducted into the South Dakota Hall of Fame.